Wouldn't life be so much simpler if these retirement plans were just a little bit easier to understand and to figure out which plan you should choose, the SEP IRA versus the solo 401k? Unfortunately, that's Congress for you. That's just the way it is. And that is the reason why I'm making this video. So in this video, we're gonna talk about five things that you need to know between the SEP IRA and the solo 401k. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to figure out which plan you should choose or if you have one or the other, should you convert? So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the employee deferrals. With the solo 401k, we can do employee deferrals up to 20,500 if you're under the age of 50 for 2022. On the SEP side, you can't do employee deferrals at all. It's only employer contributions. So pretty easy to understand those two. 20,500 solo 401k, zero for the SEP IRA. Number two are the employee er deferrals or employer contributions. Now this one, I want to talk about how these employee defer employer deferrals are made because a lot of things that you're going to read out there between if you're filing as an S corporation or not will actually change the amount that you can contribute and changes some of these rules. So I just want to run through the math because I see just too much stuff out there that is just confusing. And I want to be really clear here. So let's say that you are an S corporation and you're paying yourself a $50,000 W-2 salary. This is going to be multiplied simply by 0.25 or up to 25%. So 25% is the most that you could contribute from an employer contribution. So that is going to be $12,500. That is going to be the same if you're filing as an S corporation, whether you're making it into the SEP IRA or the solo 401k. Now, if you are not filing as an S corporation schedule C type filer, you can just simply multiply your net profit by 0.92935. And this helps you deduct or subtract one half of self-employment. And in doing so, if we look at this math, $50,000 times 0.92935, and that is $46,000. $468. This is what we call our plan compensation. So in either scenario, this is your plan compensation. This is what it's based off of. And in that case, you would multiply it by 0.2 or 20%. So times 0.2 is going to be $9,294. I just rounded up there. That is the maximum employer contribution that we can make. So it doesn't matter if you have a SEP IRA or a solo 401k, that's it. Number three that I wanna talk about is that it can only be made, that employer contribution can only be made to the traditional side. So even though the solo 401k has a Roth side to it, you can have a Roth solo 401k, you cannot make that employer contribution directly into the Roth side. You can, you can convert, but just like you can with the SEP, you can also convert but you cannot make that contribution directly into it. You can only do that with the first point that I talked about with the employee contribution. You can make that employee contribution directly into the Roth side of your retirement plan. So right now we have our employee deferrals, we have our employer deferrals, and we had that you can only make the employer side contribution into the traditional side but now I wanna talk about this, this Roth conversion or this pro rata rule that you need to be aware of. And this works a little bit differently. So I talked about this the other day, but I'm bringing up the same board here. So right now I have this solo 401k up here and we have our traditional IRAs over here. So if we make this contribution into the traditional side and we wanna convert, no big deal. If we're converting our pre-tax dollars, then it's gonna be taxable when we convert. If it's non-deductible non contributions into the traditional side, then it's going to, it's not gonna have taxes and we don't have to worry about the pro rata rule, but we do with the SEP IRA. So let's say, say for a, a, just a quick second that this is the SEP IRA. We have our SEP plan up here and we wanna do a conversion to a Roth IRA. Now the pro rata rule says that we have to look at all of our IRAs, including our traditional IRAs, our existing traditional IRAs and the SEP IRA together with our non-deductible contributions, okay? 
So you can only make non-deductible. This is also the backdoor Roth strategy. So if you make a non-deductible contribution to the traditional IRA, you can't do it to the SEP IRA, but you can do it to the traditional IRA. You make that non-deductible contribution thinking that you're going to convert, but then you have money in the SEP IRA that is pre-tax. That means you need to take an equal amount from both sides and the equal ratio of pre-tax dollars and non-deductible or post-tax dollars and then convert. What this means is that if you make a non-deductible contribution of $6,000 into the traditional IRA, and let's say that you have $6,000 just for quick math, $6,000 in your SEP IRA is a pre-tax contribution. Obviously, it can only be pre-tax contributions into the SEP. If you do that, and you convert, then you have to take an equal dollar from both sides. That means you're gonna have to convert the full 6,000 to the Roth IRA in order to get the full non-deductible contribution over to your Roth IRA. So basically you can't cherry pick the dollars. With the solo 401k, you can. With the solo 401k non-deductible contributions, you could just take the non-deductible contribution and put it over to the Roth side of your solo 401k and not have to worry about what types of contributions you already have in your IRAs because your solo 401k is not an IRA. So that is a big deal when you're looking at the difference between these two plans. So if you really wanna get a lot more money in at a lower income level, then the solo 401k is gonna be your better bet. And this also matters on your compensation because not all, let's say you just wanted to maximize the amount you're putting into both plans and you have a really high income, you might be able to get the same amount how you want it into both plans. If that's the case, it might make se sense, more sense to use the SEP IRA because it's a little bit easier to open up. I'm saying like this much easier and a few hundred dollars cheaper. That's it. It's not drastically easier. It's just a little bit easier. But if you want simplicity, then the SEP IRA is gonna be a little bit simpler. But here's how these contributions break down so you can understand a little bit better. If we go back to our S corporation example and we look at just a solo 401k, and this is also something I used the other day, if we have our $50,000 example, then with the solo, we could do this 20,500, but this wouldn't exist for the SEP. With the 12,500, we said it's the same for both. So if this is all we were looking at, then we can add these two up. That's 33,000, right? 20,500 plus 12,500, 33,000 for the solo 401k, but only 12,500 for the SEP IRA. Then if we look at our non-deductible, our backdoor, our mega backdoor Roth conversion strategy, then we can get the full amount of our compensation, the full 50,000, into this plan. And again, it would be the exact same for our plan compensation. If we were not not an S corporation, it would be our 46,000, what was it? Uh, 46,468. Uh, it would be exactly the same. That is the maximum that we can put into the solo 401k. But with the SEP IRA, we're limited to only this $12,500. And then if we wanted to then get another 6,000, again, that's where it gets hairy again with the two different types of plans that you're gonna want the solo 401k. If we put in all of our contributions to our retirement plans, and then we come back and say, you know what? I wanna make a non-deductible contribution now to my traditional IRA. If you have the solo 401k, you're in a lot better position because the pro raw rule is still gonna apply. You make that non-deductible, that backdoor um, contribution into the traditional IRA, as a non-deductible contribution and then want to convert it, the pro rata rule still applies. However, if you take your traditional pre-tax money and roll it into the solo, then it's in the solo 401k out of the pro rata rule. And that means you're only left with that non-deductible contribution. So you don't have to worry about the pro rata rule or it doesn't apply in this situation. There's no additional taxes. And then you're gonna, you're gonna be able to convert. So you can do this at a much lower income level and you're better off with the solo 401k in this instance. Now, again, what if you just want pre-tax contributions and you just want a really easy plan to set up? That's where the SEP IRA comes in. Now, even with this plan legislation that might pass, it might not. And if it doesn't, it, it sounds like it's likely to pass at some point where the SEP IRA could get a Roth side to it. However, I don't know how this is all gonna work out with the pro rata rule. It might make it a moot topic. 
like, okay, great, you can make the contribution directly into it, but the conversions still rope in all the IRAs. It, it's, it's unknown at this point. So as it stands right now, in most instances, in my opinion, the solo 401k is gonna be a better plan. Now there's a bonus thing that I really wanna talk about because again, like I said earlier, there's a lot of information out there. And if you don't get all of the facts, if you miss one little component to it, it's completely messed up. And that last part is the solo 401k. In order to do the conversions over, to do the mega backdoor Roth conversion, you need to have custom plan documents because with the templated types of solo 401ks that are out there, they basically won't allow you to do it. And the reason they won't is because these prototype plans, as they're called, they're basically generic style plans. They don't want to do the accounting for it. They don't want to figure out, okay, the traditional has deductible and non-deductible contributions to it. So to make it simpler for the accounting of it all, they, they don't allow it. They just make it really simple. So unfortunately, you can't do it until you have custom plan documents. But those are only a few hundred dollars. They're pretty easy to set up. And it's actually the way I, I went with my own solo 401k. It's how I make my contributions and have that flexibility. It's well worth it in order to do it. And then you can get way more lower incomes and maximize it. And by the way, if you have an S corporation, think about lowering your W-2 to just the amount that you really want to contribute and also meet the IRS requirement of reasonable compensation allows you to put the most into these plans and pay less in self-employment tax. So on the SEP IRA side, you're going to have to get your income up if you want to get more money into that plan. So that's one of the backdraws of the SEP IRA. And the reason why almost every plan that I deal with is a solo 401k and not a SEP IRA. So hopefully this has helped add a little bit of clarity or more clarity between the solo 401k and the SEP IRA. If you have any questions on this stuff, let me know in the comments down below and we'll see you on the next one.